There are women in the United States who believe that they are oppressed. And based on my observations, modern day feminism seems to be the root cause of this. The main argument that feminists seem to have is that female inequality is more prominent than ever. And they even go as far as to blame the patriarchy for holding them back from success. However, by continuing to focus on women's oppression and their victimhood, feminists have neglected men from the conversation. To assume that men aren't facing challenges is absurd. And if achieving gender equality is truly the aim of feminism, then in my opinion, it is unequivocally as important to shed light and awareness on male inequality as well. My name is Hannah Jennerine. I am a professional speaker on gender-based violence and personal development. And in this video, we are going to be dissecting male inequality, misandry, and modern day feminism. If this is something that you are interested in and you would like to schedule an educational talk for your school or organization, my email is in the description down below for inquiries. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. Okay, so first things first. In order to really understand male inequality, there are a few concepts that we need to understand. The first being modern day feminism and misandry. The basic consensus is that feminism as a whole started because women wanted opportunity and they wanted rights. They wanted the right to vote, own their own property, have custody of their children, keep their own wages, etc. And the foundation for this movement blames traditional gender roles and patriarchal systems that have been in place. Over time, feminism has evolved, and even though women today have far more rights and opportunities than they've ever had, they continue to believe that they are oppressed. Feminists today focus on their right to an abortion and how that has been taken away from them. They argue that racism is extremely prevalent in society, that the gender pay gap disproportionately affects women, and that women continue to face violence and discrimination on a daily basis. So to quickly sum it up, this current fourth wave feminist ideology promotes self-absorption, self-sufficiency, and this narrative that men are the root of all societal problems. What this has resulted in is misandry, the opposite of misogyny. And this has created a culture where hating men is seen as a norm. I'm sure that you've seen many videos online and even heard comments from others that perpetuate negative stereotypes about men. I mean, I know I have. And this is exactly what misandry is. It assumes that all men are misogynists. All men are violent and aggressive. Men are controlling, they are abusive and more. It's actually quite interesting and ironic that by focusing on women's oppression and hating men through misandry, that feminists have opened up a door for us to really understand male inequality and the oppression that men have faced in society. For example, let's take into account voting rights. This is something that I recently learned, but serving in the military is what really expanded voting rights for men. Early in the US's history, voting rights were often tied to property ownership. This reflected the belief that people who owned property had a vested interest in the well-being of the nation and were better equipped to vote. Now, it wasn't until World War I and World War II that voting rights for men took on an entirely different meaning. It was argued that men serving in the military, irrespective of their race or social status, deserved the right to vote as they were putting their lives on the line for their country. It wasn't until World War II that the Soldier Voting Act of 1942 was passed. This legislation recognized the importance of enabling soldiers to participate in the democratic process while serving their country and is what allowed soldiers the right to vote in their home state's elections, regardless of their current location. This piece of legislation is what acknowledged that those in uniform were actively contributing to the country's defense and should have a voice in shaping its future. So based on this information, it's evident that men had to sacrifice their lives for their country in order for our nation to prioritize their right to vote. Obviously, there are nuances when it comes to people of color and racial disparities did exist when it came to black men. However, the point that I'm trying to make is that the expansion of voting rights was due to men being drafted without choice to fight for their country. 
you see the antonym for oppression is freedom. And during World War I and World War II, men clearly did not have the freedom to choose whether or not they wanted to join the army. They had to. Isn't this what oppression is? In fact, today, if you go on the Selective Service website, it states that almost all male U.S. citizens and male immigrants who are 18 through 25 are required to register with Selective Service. And when it comes to transgender people, it states that individuals who are assigned female at birth and change their gender to male are not required to register. So even in these instances, females are still protected from war. And my thought is that if women are so focused on equality, on female representation, and wanting the same rights as men, then why isn't there a movement advocating for women to be required to join the selective service? Wouldn't this even out the playing ground? How do you explain this? Like, I'm genuinely confused. Like, I want answers. So while this all sinks in, let's take a moment to talk about education. There is such a wide education gender gap when it comes to boys and girls in the United States. According to the Brookings Institute, in every U.S. state, young women are more likely than their male counterparts to have a bachelor's degree. The education gender gap emerges well before college. However, girls are more likely to graduate high school on time and perform substantially better on standardized reading tests than boys, and about as well in math. Now, as a woman, it is fantastic to hear that girls are getting an education and they're focusing on their career growth. But it's very concerning to me that boys are lagging behind when it comes to graduation rates and test scores. In fact, when it comes to mental health, men have less access to resources and support. According to the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, men suffering from mental illnesses are less likely to receive mental health treatment or diagnoses because of stigma. Being told to man up, suck it up, tough it out, are phrases that often shame men into believing that they need to have it all together at all times. They need to be strong. They need to be a man. And when it comes to suicide, I was so shocked when I read that in 2021, men died by suicide almost four times more than women. You see, there's also inequality in the amount of representation and awareness on mental health and well-being when it comes to men. There is a shortage of male therapists mental health counselors, and social workers. While women are receiving stipends to join STEM careers, where is the funding for mental health careers when it comes to men? Are men exempt from experiencing violence? Are men not survivors as well? Is male representation when it comes to healing not important? Because that's what it seems like. These are just a few examples of male inequality and oppression in our society today. And while, like I said, I'm happy that women are getting an education and growing in their careers, they're being represented and they're having opportunities that they've never had before, I am afraid that modern day feminism is overcorrecting and is creating a culture that is neglecting men and refusing to acknowledge that male inequality is an issue in our society today. So what do you think? What other areas of male inequality are important to talk about? I know that there is, you know, an entire debate about domestic violence. Once again, the resources when it comes to men who are survivors of sexual violence, domestic violence, even when it comes to the court systems today and divorce, women are often favored over men, right? So what do you think can be done to ensure that our boys and our men are not lagging behind and are receiving the support, guidance, and care that they need? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Also, if you have a different perspective than I do, please feel free to share your beliefs. I can't wait to see what you think. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and turn your post notifications on for more content. And I will see you with a video very soon.